I'll break all this down more, but when it comes to air quality and lung respiratory safety in the shop, there are two threats to be concerned about that I'm concerned about, particulates and VOCs. And there's three approaches that I take to reduce those and protect myself. And I think that provides a comprehensive way to stay healthy in the shop and enjoy woodworking longer and make it a safer environment for other people to potentially join you in the shop, in my case, my kids, and even my pets that I enjoy having out here. So the first threat I talked about is particulates, which is something we're really familiar with. You know, normally in a wood shop, we just call it the sawdust that's everywhere. Now on our machines, it's really just a nuisance, but it's a recognized carcinogen. So in your lungs, it's, you know, a cause of cancer. So we would definitely want to keep this out of our lungs. And if we can keep a cleaner shop, now for the first of the three mitigation strategies, which is collecting the dust or particulates at the source, which is dust collection. Because if you can pick it up where it's being created and capture that, then you don't have to worry about it being in the ambient air where it can then get into your lungs or anything. There's a lot to be said for collecting particulates at the source, but what's very important is what happens after you collect them. Um, all units, or I mean all units I can think of, have some type of filter, but it may not be doing what you think it's doing. Um, the unit I have has a good pleated filter. A lot of the really inexpensive dust collectors you see have a bag that acts as a filter. And those are only rated to capture particles down to five microns. So everything under five microns basically gets sucked up and then blown out the bag to be distributed throughout the shop. So it's really great for collecting the nuisance items like the big chips so you don't have a giant mess all over your shop you have to sweep up. But the problem is, all that fine stuff under five microns is the stuff that's actually carcinogenic that really hurts your lungs. So if you don't have a good filter system on whatever unit you're using, all you're doing is putting the really dangerous stuff back in the air at head height. So bear that in mind. If that's the only kind of unit you have, make sure you're wearing your PPE. Maybe consider some type of ambient unit, which we're gonna get into all that, or some type of ventilation. And the answer is, if at all possible, get a pleated filter unit that's rated to capture particles down to half of a micron. That's the unit that's actually gonna catch the stuff that's most dangerous to you and help keep you healthy and give you the most you know, benefit out of your efforts of collecting at the tool. So our first strategy, collect at the source, makes a lot of sense with particulates because we can use vacuums, shop vacs, dust collectors, etc., to grab sawdust or metal dust, grinding dust, whatever, exactly where we're working. So how do we do that with VOCs? Well, depending on how you're interacting with it, if say you're spraying finish, you can use a spray booth that has um, positive pressure or a fan to extract, so you're pulling all those fumes out of the environment or when welding. A lot of companies make fume extractors, so it's a vacuum you set up close to where you're welding, so it pulls those fumes away. So collecting it at the source is still a viable option. Sometimes that isn't. So the next best thing that works here, to some degree with particulates, is just work in a very ventilated environment like outside where there's a breeze that just carries it all away from you and keeps the area clean. Um, where we normally encounter them in a wood shop is through our finishes and solvents. The obvious answer is use some of the alternatives that are low or no VOC. Um, lacquer is incredibly nasty and just kills brain cells. So use a water-based lacquer or just use a different product. That's one of the reasons I've been a huge fan of the Total Boat stuff is their Halcyon finishes are water-based, so they're very safe, low VOC, and I don't have to use solvents to thin it or clean it up, just water. Okay, so we've collected as much as we can at the tool, whether it's dust collection to get particulates, or if we're in a spray booth or just have ventilation or have gone outside if we're dealing with VOCs. But the most important part of all this is we're trying to keep it out of our lungs. Inevitably, we're not gonna capture all of it. Some of it will get into the ambient air. So how do we stop it from our lungs? Well, that's where PPE, personal protective equipment, comes in. There are different types of masks, and depending on what your threat is, depends on what type of mask you wanna wear. Your regular dust mask, and you wanna make sure these are at least N95 rated, just throw in a cloth or bandana, is gonna filter some particulates, but as we talked about before, it's probably not gonna catch the ones that are actually dangerous, just the ones that are more of a nuisance. So if you've got at least N95 rated, that's gonna stop the particulates that are most dangerous to you. 
but only particulates. Um, I like using an RZ mask most of the time and some notes on this. These work for a lot of people, for some people they don't fit well. If your mask doesn't fit well, then air takes the path of least resistance. So if it doesn't provide a good seal, instead of going through the filter, it's going to find ways around the mask and you're still gonna be breathing the contaminated air in. So it doesn't help you. Um, I get pretty good seals with this, even with my beard. Well, if it's pretty good, not perfect, why do I use it? Well, because the next option, or even these, I don't get great seals with these, so why bother using them? And that's where the philosophy of harm reduction comes in, which is, you know, it's better to do something than nothing. Because going, oh, I'm only gonna stop 80% of the particulates and not 100, so you know what? I'm just gonna breathe 100% instead of only breathing 20%. Not a good philosophy. Well, why not go to the thing that's gonna work and capture everything? Um, because it's a pain to put on, pain to take off, and it's uncomfortable and they get hot and sweaty. So every single time I'm doing something that's gonna make dust, I'm, I'm just not gonna put this on. And I know that, I've accepted that about myself. So to reduce the harm at those times, I will put this on, because it's quick it's, and it's comfortable and I don't mind wearing it for extended periods of time because this thing I wanna take off as soon as I get it. This, if I'm gonna be bouncing between a bunch of machines, I don't mind if I'm wearing this for you know half an hour or so, or if I'm just occasionally making dust, I don't mind slapping it on, slapping it off. It's Velcro, it's quick, so it's harm reduction. Now, going back to how making sure we stop the right things. We wanna make sure we have the N95 rating on whatever kind of filters we're using to stop the particulates. But those do absolutely nothing for the VOCs. To stop VOCs and filter them out, you need activated charcoal. My RZ mask, um, they do have activated charcoal filters, so they'll do it. And when you're looking at your true respirators, depending on what canister filters you have, you need to check them and make sure whether or not they're activated charcoal or not. If they are activated charcoal, then they will stop VOCs. If they're not, they're only particulates. So even though they may reduce the odor you smell, they're not actually stopping or catching the compounds that are gonna hurt your lungs. So that's something to be conscious of. Another thing is realizing that they have a useful life. So whatever filters you buy, make sure you check the documentation and see how long they're good for. Because after time, the activated charcoal just stops working, whether it's in a fil cartridge or just a little paper filter. And once it stops working, it's not it's not working. So even though it might reduce the amount of odor you smell, you're still breathing all that stuff in. So that's something to be cautious of. Another thing that's often overlooked with respirators and masks is how you store them. So um, I'm personally not very great at this, but I do want to show the knowledge, even though I don't practice it as well as I should. And that is, you know, it only stops things if the danger stays on the outside and not on the inside. So if you are making dust or spraying something and as soon as you finish while the ambient air is still full of whatever the threat is, you take this off and just leave it open. Well, guess what? The inside of your mask or respirator just got contaminated. And so the next thing, next time you put it on, you're basically just breathing in a, a you know concentrated dose of exactly what you were trying to stop from getting into your lungs. Another thing is like we talked about the useful life on those activated charcoal. So to maximize the life, what you wanna do is take off your activated charcoal filters whenever you're done using them and bag them. And you also want to bag them separately from your respirator because the outside of these cartridges are gonna be contaminated with the particulates or VOC. So these go in one container and then your respirator, after you've left the contaminated area, you wanna wipe it down and put it in a different bag. Because if you put these in the bag together, even if you wipe this down, everything on these is now just gonna get in there. And even if it doesn't, um, they can leach some back out. So you, know, you don't wanna contaminate your mask. And wiping it down isn't just about removing it, but also as you're breathing, you're expelling a lot of humidity and moisture from your breath. And these can become a, you know, a little Petri disc, disc dish full of mold and other nastiness you don't wanna be breathing. So it really wouldn't be great to you know, do all the hassle and take all the precautions to stop particulates or VOCs, but then put on your mask and breathe a bunch of mold spores because you haven't been you know, wiping out your mask to keep it from growing nastiness. And I think that about covers PPE. Sorry if that was a little long-winded. Now for ambient air. 
air filtration is how we can clean the ambient air to make sure we can keep working faster and maintain a safer environment. This is an air cleaner from Grizzly. You can get them from Winjet, all kinds of other manufacturers are on Amazon fairly cheap. I think you can pick up some of the smaller versions of units like this as low as like $120, $130 and they work really well. Normally they have a double filter set up. So you have a pre-filter that catches the big stuff and then a finer filter on the inside and then it exhausts clean air. However, most of these only work for particulates and don't do anything for VOCs. So with VOCs, how do we take care of ambient air? And that's where the sponsor of this video comes in, EnviroCleanse. This is their mobile air system and it doesn't only clean particulates, but also VOCs from the air. So whenever I'm spraying finish in the shop, even if I'm using that low VOC water-based finish, it's still in the air and this will clean that from the air and not just clean it from the air, but also keep it from getting inside my house through the door because these are attached. Because like most of you, I don't have a detached dedicated shop. I'm just working in my two car garage. Now, for that uniqueness, which is being able to clean VOCs, which is a big deal, you do pay the price for it. This is a $700 unit, but I'm still comfortable sitting here saying, I think this is worthwhile and I'd invest in it for a variety of reasons. One, I do this a lot. As I mentioned before, this is what I do full time. So, and I wanna be able to keep doing it. There is a real risk where even though I may not have um, a high degree of sensitivity to the things I work with right now so they don't immediately bother me and I can breathe in certain amounts and there's no issue. Sensitization is a real risk, which is basically through repeated exposure, your body develops what's essentially an allergy and where something might not have bothered you before, it starts bothering you. And I don't wanna get sensitized to my halcyon or wood dust or certain species and then have to take extreme risks or just not be able to work with them at all anymore. So this is a precaution I can take to ensure I can keep doing this long term. Fortunately, I don't have any major health concerns with members of my family, but again, I am in this detached shop. However, I know there are people out here there who have family members who are at risk, immunocompromised, have respiratory illnesses, severe allergies, or other issues. So even working in an attached space is just too much of a risk. So you can't worry about the fumes that do make their ways into the house. So your options are build a detached shop or just not engage in your hobby. You could always go outside, which is the obvious alternative, but that only works certain seasons and in certain climates. So here in Tennessee, you know, there's a lot of the year where it's just too humid to be able to, you know, go outside to spray finish and do stuff like that. And in a lot of the world, I know that's the case where it's either too cold or too hot or too humid or whatever. So again, that's a huge limiting factor. So even though this does have a price tag, the $700 might be the thing that enables you to keep working when you otherwise wouldn't or keep you from having to build another shop or, or something like that. So I still feel very comfortable recommending this unit. Another thing I like is how quiet it is. The whole time I've been recording this video, I've had this in whisper mode. It's got three other modes and it goes up to high, so which moves a lot more air but gets louder. I'm not gonna crank it up because I don't wanna ruin the audio but this is on Whisper and I can't wait to review the footage. I don't think I'm even gonna be able to hear this on my microphone because I can barely hear it right now. The cool thing is it's portable, so if you're worried about anything going on inside, you can also bring this inside when you're not in the shop and just use it to keep the air in your house a little bit healthier for you and yours. And if you've been around, you know, review videos aren't my thing, so I'm not gonna put this thing through its paces and do a bunch of testing. There are quite a few other people who have done that, including my buddy, Brandon. So if for some reason, all the accredited laboratory results on these units that they have posted on their site that they paid a lot of money to have done, uh, just, you know, doesn't trust it for you and you wanna watch some other dude in his garage prove that it works. Uh, my buddy Brandon from Maker Break Shop did a pretty good review on this unit where you can see him put it through its paces and prove that it scrubs smoke from the air and other things like that. But anyway, this is the first in a few videos I'm gonna be doing on trying to get to a dust-free shop or at least a much healthier, safer shop because I wanna be able to bring my kids out here more with me while I'm working and with, uh, this is March, April of 2020, so the shelter in place, coronavirus, COVID-19, everything is in full effect and schools are shut down until further notice. So being able to have them 
out here with me is going to be really nice. So I'm glad I've been planning on this and the timing works out well. This is the Clearview system that I ordered this week. I'm glad it's here. So I'm going to be upgrading my desk collector and I'm going to be working with a few other companies to upgrade some tools and expect more videos to be coming out on that. And if you're interested in that information and found this valuable, make sure you subscribe and hit the notify bell. So that way YouTube actually does tell you when those videos come out. Anyway, I hope you learned something. We're inspired to take a little bit better care of yourself or we're at least entertained. And until next time, make time to make something.